folks. We are here to talk to you today about storage, memory, and a new Intel product called Optane. First, I wanna jump back and talk about different types of storage and how storage has changed over time. So the storage in your computer can either be volatile, which means it disappears without an electric charge, like when you restart or turn your machine off, or non-volatile, which is stable for the long term. Now, this makes volatile memory seem like a terrible idea. Why would you ever wanna store data somewhere that one trip over a power cord could erase everything? Well, it's because it tends to be way faster. Volatile memory is used as primary memory. That's where your computer holds the open programs and the data that you are working on right now. But it clearly has a big drawback. Turn off your machine and it vanishes. Now, on the flip side, non-volatile memory is great for long-term storage, or what they call secondary memory. It's generally cheap, but it's too slow to use exclusively. Think back to the days when loading a new level of a game or even turning on your PC could take five or 10 minutes. That's the speed we're talking about here. A modern computer finds a balance between these two. Data is moved from the slow but safe secondary memory into the faster volatile memory as you need it, and then back to the safe memory once you're done. It's pretty easy to see here that we still want our secondary memory to be as fast as possible to keep programs opening quickly and keep your PC at peak efficiency. Now, the first usable volatile memory was something called a Williams tube. And in your PC today, it takes the form of RAM. If you want to store data long-term on a computer, remember you need non-volatile memory. And the first mass-produced computer, the IBM 650, used giant spinning magnetic drums to store data. And these eventually evolved into the hard drive as we know it today. And since the 50s, almost every new type of storage technology that has come out has been based off of magnetism. The last big new type of storage to hit the market was flash. And while we've only started seeing flash drives and SSDs in the last decade, flash was actually released more than 30 years ago. So all of this is to make you understand that when Intel released a new memory product this summer based on entirely new technology, that was a really big deal. It's called Optane, and it's impressive for a few reasons. It's supposed to be faster than Flash, maybe 10 times faster. It's also non-volatile, and it skirts a lot of the technical problems that Flash has. It also should be durable enough for long-term storage. Intel developed it with the company Micron, and they call it 3D Crosspoint. But the crazy thing is, we still don't know what that actually is. Now, all data storage breaks down into ways to hold ones and zeros. Magnetic storage uses tiny magnetized metallic dots to store the data, and flash uses little transistor arrays called cells. Now, a side note here, one of the problems with flash is that these cells are organized into big arrays called blocks. And if you wanna make a change to a single cell, you need to delete and rewrite an entire block. Now, considering each cell can only be rewritten a certain number of times, lots of tiny changes to data and little rewrites can wear out Flash quickly. So how does Optane actually work? We still don't know. We are almost positive it stores data by changing resistance. That is how easily electricity flows back and forth through a cell. It most closely resembles what's called phase change memory, or PCM. Now, this is a type of storage that works by changing the physical properties of a crystal. A phase change memory cell uses something called calcogenide glass. This is a special type of glass that can switch between being a structured crystal or an amorphous solid. That's essentially window glass, where the atoms are just in a jumble. And it switches when you heat it up, usually with a laser or electricity. The crystal conducts electricity, but the amorphous solid blocks it. And this acts as your ones and zeros in the cell. Interestingly, this is actually how rewritable CDs work as well. They use lasers to change the state of a thin layer of calcogenide, which also changes how well it reflects light. So is Optane a calcogenide-based type of phase change memory? Well, we know Intel and Micron have both been working on this type of technology. They've filed about 20 patents on phase change technology in recent years. But then in 2015, Intel told reporters that Optane was definitively not based on phase change memory. So since then, with more people testing and looking at the Optane products that are actually out on the market, in some cases under electron microscopes, 
we can definitely say that Optane includes phase change materials, but it doesn't behave quite like phase change memory we've seen in the past. It is possible Intel has just found an innovative new way to use these materials. One theory is that their memory may never entirely become a crystal, and that lets them change states faster than was possible before. Either way, it's the first technology of this kind to hit the consumer market. So, what will Optane do for your PC? Well, at the moment, it's actually kind of a disappointment. You can go out right now and buy an Optane storage drive, but the biggest drive available to consumers is only 32 gigabytes. Still, 375 gigabyte enterprise drives are out there for data centers, and we should hopefully see bigger consumer drives in the near future. The idea is to pair this little 32 gig drive with a standard mechanical hard drive to help speed it up by acting as a cache. Now, this type of hybrid drive has existed for years with flash drives, and unfortunately, the first generation of Optane drives, when paired with a normal hard drive, are not vastly faster than the same setup using flash. So who is this drive for? Well, first off, it won't work on any platform older than Intel's KB Lake, which came out last year, and it will only work on KB Lake 200 series motherboards. You also need a free M2 slot on that board. As a cache attached to a big hard drive, it can provide a really big increase in speed, but being pretty small at 32 gigs, it may actually struggle with really big files. It's also restricted to the boot drive. You can't use it as a cache with any secondary drives. So, if you are running a new Intel system and you are still booting and running all of your programs off a standard mechanical hard drive, you can seriously speed up your system. For the rest of us, you can't really use Optane in any practical way yet. Now, there is potential for some big advantages in the server space, and that is important if you are someone who likes the internet. Also, there is good evidence that we're only seeing the bare minimum of Optane's potential performance on the desktop. After all, Intel's first mass market flash drives were around $600 for 80 gigs of space when they came out in 2008. And today, that same price will get you 800 gigs of storage that can run 10 times faster. Really, the dream for the future is instead of having to worry about your primary and your secondary memory, your computer could just have one big pool of universal memory, fast enough to work on, cheap enough to have a lot of it, but stable enough to store all your files long term. Intel's enterprise version of Octane looks a lot more promising in that way. It may be the first step to that universal memory future. They call it the P4800X, and it's way faster than Flash in most cases, and it can be used alongside RAM as part of a computer's primary memory. But until we see that version of Octane trickle down to us consumers, we're stuck with a drive that's more novelty than revolution.